Aloha. Welcome to the show, The State of the State of Hawaii. I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll Dalton. Today's topic is uh, about Big Islands, Hawaii's world renowned Mount Kea Mountain, is the likely installation of a 30 uh, meter telescope, and all, always known as the TMT as well. So, our expert guest here for this conversation about that that placement of that important resource for not only Earth, <laughs> but the universe is here, and he is Sam King. So welcome, and mahalo, Sam. Oh, thank you for having me. The pleasure. So why don't you begin by telling us what is the TMT? OK. <laughs> so the 30-meter telescope is a astronomical facility, ground-based telescope that has a meter that is 30 meters wide and so the consortium that wants to build it is an international consortium it these the, the people that got together were the university of california system caltech the and then the lead scientific agencies in india japan china and canada and so the project is multi-billion dollars and they want to build this telescope on top of Mauna Kea on the Bay Island. And when you, the telescopes, the, you know, it's, it's kind of, I, I am not a scientist, I am an attorney. So I asked the scientist guys for all the details, but from what I learned, you know, it's all just about collecting light, right? So the bigger the telescope, the bigger the mirror, the more light you can collect, the faster you can collect it and the sharper images you can get. So these next generation telescopes are way bigger than anything else they've ever built. And the Europeans are building some, there's another American consortium out of Texas that's gonna build one and that's looking to build one in Chile, which we can talk about in a sec, I think. And so they're all these really, really large 30 meters or more telescopes. And they can, they're so powerful, they look back close to the beginning of the known universe. So Sam, this telescope, the TMT, is about, has been about, will be about looking, right? Scanning the universe and looking into the universe versus the other work that's listening, that's something else, correct? So TMT is about, the, can you clarify that? Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not the scientist guy, but yeah, it's all, you know, nobody when they do astronomy and space sciences, they're not really physically directly looking at things. They do but a lot of times it's spectrum of light right or they're they're collecting some other data that you wouldn't normally see with the human eye or human senses so tmt though will be collecting physical will be collecting photons the light will be hitting the instruments they're not listening for sound waves or anything like that but it's probably not too different uh from what you when you get down to it so i there's actually a group which i'm also involved in uh the executive director of ohana kilohoku and Ohana Kilahoku has these sessions where we've teamed up with uh, some people from uh, U uh, University of California system, where uh, Santa Cruz, and we are able to watch astronomers use the telescopes on Mauna Kea. And so we posted the videos on ohanakilahoku.org's website. And you can see what these guys do. And it's very interesting because they're not looking directly at one little star right They're 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 looking at it but it's not like you're zooming in like in star trek or something right where you're watching it it's they're collecting light beams and then they're cutting those beams into a rainbow spectra so that's well, the kind of stuff tmt will be doing that's fascinating but is that publicly accessible or do you have to have something from the uc to get you in nope nope so the videos we have online for ohana kilohoku are publicly accessible they're on they're on our website and then we have a registration link you can sign up and you can go and uh we'll send you an email where as we we work on the program right now we don't have anything on deck but we're working on having some more uh videos some more partnerships online and then when you register at the current system we'll send you an email and then that email will have the zoom link and you can jump in and, and watch the show Oh, that's that's a nice opportunity for those who have interest. So take a look at this website. It's it's going to stream across the bottom of the screen. And yeah, this well, this is a different one. So that that's imuotmt.org. I'll just clarify for your viewers. Imuotmt.org is a is a separate group, not to confuse anybody. Okay. But ohanakilahoku.org is a is another group that's just an example of of what this what this provides. 
Okay, sorry, so if, sorry to confuse you, Steph. Well, that's well. If somebody goes on your website, can they ask that question and get the link to the next one to the other? Absolutely. One? I mean, they can email me for sure. Yeah, uh, sure. TMT at, at gmail.com. We can definitely send people any information about Ohana Kilohoku. Yeah, Ohana Kilohoku is a, a separate group that is Native Hawaiian supporting astronomy and space sciences oh. in Hawaii. And so it's, a, yeah, it's a fabulous group. It's, it's a ton of fun. Actually, Iwu it, it, TMT is much more focused on TMT. And whereas Ohana Kilohoku is more about supporting the astronomy industry as a whole. And so it's, it's a great, it's a great network. It's a great group. And those videos are, are great stuff. And there you go to the ohanakilohoku.org uh, and you check out the videos tab and you can, you can see those videos. And then you can, you register at our opportunities page. There's a section about shadow the scientist oh, or cool. shadow the astronomer or astronomy nights. That's, that's what it's called. Okay. Well, just say it one more time. Maybe Michael can pick it you up. Got, oh, yeah, Michael's got it. Ohanakilohoku.org. Think tech tech. Oh fabulous aren't they okay um well tell us a little bit how did you get involved with this since you said you're an attorney and so now this is a lot, lot yeah. Of yeah yeah so speaking of tmt specifically right and which is which is a very different thing from the astronomy industry as a whole um so tmt started i, I i've been watching the tmt issue for a while um for a couple of years while i was in law school especially because it just brings up a lot of interesting topics you know, Native Hawaiian rights, Native Hawaiian history, uh, land use law, which I specialized in when I was in law school, and, and I and I worked on that after law school. And so, while I was watching it, uh, there was protests in 2015 that prevented the construction start, and then the Supreme Court overturned the permit because TMT went and got a they got a decision by the Board of Land and Natural Resources before the contested case hearing happened which is a process that the BLNR had followed previously uh, and to the criticism of many people where they were voting on things before they had these contested case hearings. And BLNR's logic was, well, we can't have a contested case hearing if we don't do anything. So we have to vote first and then have it. So the Supreme Court said, no, 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 you can't do it like that. You gotta do contested case hearing first. So in 2015, TMT got overruled because of that. Then they went back, they did another contested case hearing. And then after that contested case hearing, Board of Land and Natural Resources voted to approve it. And then in 2019, TMT tried to build again. And so this is, I mean, we can go over a little bit of this history again, just to explain, you know, and, and maybe it's worth mentioning that the, the, the steeplechase that TMT has gone through to get approval. I mean, that the things I just described are just two minor things. I mean, this doesn't even talk about all the community outreach TMT did, right? the EIS process they went through, two different contested case hearings, getting a con uh, conservation district use permit, two Supreme Court cases. It's the, the amount of vetting, this is the most vetted project, I think, in the history of the state of Hawaii. And so I got involved in 2019 when I saw the protests happening and I just, I couldn't believe that the state of Hawaii was not enforcing the law and arresting the people blocking the road, physically blocking the road, despite the fact that TMT had been approved by the Supreme Court, their permits were finalized. And it just upset me. I was just like, that's, it's not acceptable that, that this is happening in my state. And also the fact that the narrative that was being told was that Native Hawaiians were opposed to the project, whereas the polls that were coming out at the time said that 70% of Native Hawaiians supported the project, right? And the polls were not great for that demographic, but they showed that they, they support them. And I, you know, I've talked to many native wines and they all tell me, oh, oh yeah, we support it. And I, and there's plenty that oppose it and plenty of people that oppose it, but not as many as was painted. Okay, and so you. it just drove me up a wall. And so I had to get involved. Okay. Well, I, you said they, they did an IES, an EIS, which is an environmental impact statement. And so uh, were they also doing a, a statement about the cultural issues? So as these whole this EIS involves that. Were, were those getting documented too? Absolutely. Was, critically documented or validly do documented too? Well, absolutely. So the environment, and that was one of the reasons I got involved. So one of the things I wrote uh, in my op-ed, the, 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 what triggered my involvement was I wrote an op-ed about the protest. And I, with Malia Martin, who was the co-founder of Imua TMT, the group. She, the, the lady named Malia Martin had started a Facebook page a few years earlier. And so we teamed up to create the group. And so that op-ed, we called for everyone to come to a rally at the Capitol. 
And one of the things that you realize is when you read the EIS, you read about how good it is, right? And so how good the project is. And one of the things in the EIS is a cultural impact section by Kepa Mali, who's one of the greatest experts around. And there's actually some stuff in there I don't fully agree with that's more slanted towards the sacredness discussion, which we can cover too. But they did document all of that. I mean, it's been extensively discussed and the University of Hawaii has done a tremendous job documenting it. And it's actually funny that UH gets so criticized now for their management of Akea because they got one bad audit 22 years ago, even 24 years ago now, and they've improved dramatically. Now, one of the things they do so well is they document all the cultural sites, all the ancient you know, and traditional customary practices of Native Hawaiians, including the ads quarry, right? I mean, I don't know if many people know that the Native Hawaiians, the ancient Hawaiians used Mauna Kea as an industrial site, right? Shaving rock at the level that we had back in the day. And these were kahuna priests doing this Wow. Because yep. they want to keep the monopoly on the rock is my theory. And so because the rock at top of Mauna Kea is really hard lava rock. So it's the best rock in the islands. It's very dense. And so they used an area that's about 960 times the size of the TMT site to, wow. to mine Mauna Kea. And it was all these shavings all around. And we know a lot of this because, you know, UH is going around doing all these studies and they're looking at all these things. Well, when did the TMT first go in? What was the beginning? Oh, that is a good question. I think TMT started looking at Hawaii as a location in like 2005 around then. And so they, I think they officially started coming in around 2010. And okay. so they were like 13, what is it? They, there were already 10 or 12 telescopes up there. There was already a site. Yeah, there's something like 13 telescopes up there already right now. Do you happen to know when all that began? The telescope started going up in about the 70s. So back in the late 60s, uh, there were a couple things going on. One of them was that the Big Island got hit by a tsunami. So the economy was devastated. So the business community was looking for new ways to expand, new, new, new ways to generate growth on the Big Island. And one of the things they looked at was astronomy. And so they went to Mount Akea and they UH did a study and said this is one of the greatest places in the world to do astronomy and so then in the 70s they started looking into it there's actually a report uh, on Imua TMT's website there is a report that was a, an audit that was recently done uh, and that audit has a timeline of it and basically in the 1970s they built the first telescopes and there's nobody protested at first mm-hmm. nobody said anything everybody thought it was great and I'm, there's people that we've worked with. Uh, there's one attorney that's been on Imo TMT's panels, Kimo Stone, who's, you know, he lived on the Big Island. He's, you know, said, like, I remember living there. People thought it was fantastic that the telescopes are going on. I know other people from the Big Island. They, they love driving up to Mount Ikea to play in the snow. And the road was only built for the telescopes, right? You couldn't get up there except if you were riding a horse. And so people thought it was great. And then there was some concerns over time about, the construction there was stuff left behind construction materials that weren't cleaned up trash that wasn't cleaned up and that that started happening a little bit after the development and then it started becoming a political issue you know people that lived on the big island didn't like the telescopes obstructing their beautiful view of the mountains right they're like oh they look like pimples right they, they want to live in their mm-hmm. bucolic idealistic view of what hawaii was supposed to be whenever they bought the brochure or there are people that started coming up with more political reasons to object to astronomy on Mount Akea. Well, is this the point at which the sacred issue came up? What, yeah, they- that's about that. Most of the sacred issues started coming up. Well, I think there have been some discussions about it, but one of the things documented by the EIS and by MUATMT's discussions also is that a lot of the religious practices on Mount Akea that people claim are religious pract- Hawaiian religious practices didn't start until after the TMT contested case hearings, right? And during the contested case hearings, they interview people that are claiming that the protesters that are claiming these religious practices, and they admit that they haven't, they didn't start practicing these things until after the TMT protest. And it makes total sense. And this is an important thing to know. Any claim of sacredness of Mauna Kea from a native Hawaiian perspective is based on the Kapu religion, right? The Kapu religion was the dominant Polynesian religion of Hawaii, right? That all throughout Polynesia, there was a kapu or a taboo religion 
that existed. It was kind of a system. It wasn't fixed. There were no set priests, right? There was a lot of different people I and mean, different beliefs, different gods. Everybody had their own gods. But that was the kind of the dominant religion of Hawaii. So when Kamehameha conquered the islands, he started trying to standardize the religion, right? Because before Kamehameha conquered, remember, Hawaii wasn't a, called Hawaii, right? The first documented name of these islands is, is not is the Sandwich Isles, right? That was when Cook arrived. He's like, I'm going to call these islands the Sandwich Isles, right? But, but the actual natives he spoke to called it a Tui, right? Because they were talking about Kauai. It was the first place he showed up was Kauai. And so they, he asked them what the name is. They said a Tui. But they didn't say these are the Hawaiian islands because Kamehameha conquered all the islands from Hawaii. So prior to that conquering, there was no Hawaiian religion because there was no Hawaii. Kamehameha tried to create a Hawaiian religion by imposing his idea of what the kapu system should be and how people should act. But then after he died, his favorite wife, Queen Kahumanu, who became the queen regent and the mother of Kamehameha II, Queen Keopuolani, Keopuolani, sorry, Queen, uh, they overthrew the kapu system. Keopuolani and Kahumanu didn't like the kapu system because men and women couldn't eat together. And Kahumanu especially was chafing under the system because she was the regent and there were certain political decisions made in Heiau that she couldn't attend, she couldn't, she couldn't eat with the men. So she didn't want to go there. So they convinced Kamehameha II to eat dinner with them publicly in front of all the chiefs. And that resulted in the abolition of the Kapu system, which they called Ainoa, which means free eating. And after that happened, there was actually a civil war in Hawaii where the nephew of Kamehameha I, to whom Kamehameha I had given his war god idol, objected to the destruction of the Kapu system because his power was based on the religion, the old religion that Kamehameha was trying to establish, right? And so yeah. he said, no, we're going to keep it. And Kamehameha II and his prime minister and his forces, after declaring that the Kapu system was gone and ordering the desecration of all the Heia, the destruction of all, that's why nobody can, you know, all the archaeologists now are upset, they all, all the Heia are destroyed. It's because Kamehameha the second destroyed them all. But when Kamehameha the second, uh, Kamehameha the first nephew objected, Kamehameha the second's forces went and killed him, and they they killed them all. And Kamehameha, you know, this this guy's uh, there's a Kamehameha the first nephew's wife named Manono uh, was executed on the battlefield. There's a whole article about it in Hanalo well, magazine. Well, so the point is that the the religion was obliterated, right? So there's no there was not a lot of people practicing it. And to the extent there were, they were practicing it secret and privately, which is fine. But when you fast forward to today, the reality is that from the time of the kingdom, Hawaii has had freedom of religion, right? There's been debates and fights about imposing moral laws. And ironically, the moral laws that the elite were trying to impose were Christian laws, right? The elite converted to Christianity and started trying to impose Christian morals on Hawaii. And Kamehameha III was one of the guys that objected to that. But, but the word land in all of this that gets us into the sacred land problem. That well, see, the thing is that in, in the Kapu religion, I mean, it was, a, it was a theocracy, right? So they used religion to govern land use, right? It wasn't, but the, and the fundamental point of it all was that all land was sacred. Right, the entire state is sacred. All the land is sacred. Right, Waikiki is sacred. Waikiki had some of the best water on Taro land in the whole state, and it's owned by the elite trust. And now it's what, and now it's hotels, right? And the elite trusts are making bank off tourists, right? And because because Hawaiians are adaptive and innovative and entrepreneurial, right? We're we're out there making money, and people want to come here and enjoy the beach. So do we, and we're happy to put you up for the night if you will pay us for your services. That, that's perfectly fine. That's a great thing. In fact, I think it's one of the greatest things because exporting love and fun and aloha. How could that is the best thing you could possibly produce next to really cool astronomy pictures great memories of a trip to Hawaii. I have literally traveled to over 40 countries. I went to Syria and I saw an umbrella. Syria, there's an umbrella with Hawaii with one eye and a palm tree on it, right? That was the image people had of what was a happy place, right? I went to Zambia and I was eating a Hawaiian pizza. I don't even like Hawaiian pizza that much. I don't like pineapple, but they loved the idea of it, right? And that 
that is awesome. That's a great thing. And you've just carved out the the whole the that the maybe you've maybe you've indicated that then the whole sacred con constraint or issue or controversy is a cherry picking kind of issue. In other words, they decide that that Mount Achaia had special activities, whether they were religious or what cultural or what have you. But uh, it's not it's not coming down through the religion, which is what seems to be the message that this is, uh, you know, established, established uh, uh, view of I that. Think the, I think the key thing for viewers to know, for the people of Hawaii to know, for the world to know, is that we have freedom of religion in Hawaii. We do not the state does not establish religions in this state, mm -hmm. in this land. And we never did, even from the beginning, the first constitution under Kamehameha the third, it still it, it actually mentioned Jehovah and said, you know, you should respect Jehovah, but it said no one will be punished for ignoring Jehovah. Right. right. And the second constitution, they said there is freedom of religion. And that's that's from the kingdom. Well, it seems that then there are that that usually is a considered one of the strands of the controversy. I mean, the cultural issues, the religious issues, you know, that that involve the sacredness. And then there's the competition with other places that might have uh, mountains comparable to Mount Kea that this could move away from Hawaii and away from the U.S. and be somewhere else. But it, it seems like the cultural issues and this religious issue have have. Are they playing out their role or are, are they subsiding as i mean because they've been so strong with all the demonstrations is that or is that my being you know you know swayed no, no it, it cannot be resolved see the, the objections to tmt are based on movement politics right the protesters are using a tactic called known as movement politics and movement politics is about winning they every day that tmt is not built the protesters consider a victory so they will never stop making up claims about whatever is going on. Every single claim the protests have ever come up with has been debunked. Mauna Kea is not sacred as a native Hawaiian matter, as I've already explained. Yes. Mauna Kea is not, the TMT is not going to harm the aquifer. The protesters are still claiming that. TMT, and I explained the steeplechase, right? TMT went through an environmental impact statement. They went through all the vetting from the, the press. They went through the Supreme Court. There is no reason to believe the protesters are ever going to stop. That being said, there are efforts now in the legislature to try and come up with a way to have dialogue. And you know that's a good thing, to have dialogue in Hawaii. It's, it's a way we resolve conflict, and that's, that's a good idea. It's just, I always caution people to, to acknowledge that dialogue in and of itself is not useful if the people aren't coming to the table in good faith, right? We already had the good faith dialogue, that's what the contested case hearing is. That's why you had to sit on the stand and answer questions, right? But now the dialogue just being used as a delaying tactic. Mm -hmm. That being said, I'll just wrap with this. The federal government has said through the National Academy of Sciences that the TMT is the most important project for ground-based astronomy in America. And they should team up with the Giant Magellan Telescope, which is the Texas consortium. They're gonna build one down in Chile. And that's the most important thing to fund. Well, what is you have to go through another EIS process that will involve another cultural impact component, and that'll bring in a lot more money to mitigate the cultural impacts. And that, if that gets funded, that will push TMT forward again. And there'll be so there'll be more conversations about these things. Well, okay, and what about the funding? I mean, speaking of topics to come together on, I know that one of the critics of the work is 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 saying that there ha in the decision making process, it's about TMT and uh, the activities up surrounding it, that there hasn't been community input, that that somehow these these have all been decided decisions or top-down decisions by the managers. Can you talk to that just a little bit about how that works and if he's right or we could do better there? The protesters have been listened to. They just haven't won. That's why they're upset. There has been community input. They just haven't, they're just not, we're not doing what they want. And therefore they're claiming you're not listening to them. TMT is listening to people like me. I, I'm saying go build. That's excellent. And they should do that. And the community in Hawaii in general has consistently been in favor of the 30 meter telescope. So there's been tons of community input. And like I said, I just explained, there yeah. was a contested case hearing, yes. media coverage. I mean, that is the process. 
Well, what about this bill, House Bill 2024? What is that bringing to the discussion? And I believe, and I, I don't have it all on my fingertips, but I believe this is the one where the Mount Akea Working Group that was convened by the House of Representatives for the state of Hawaii is looking at a new managing entity for Mount Akea. So uh, right now, the Department yeah. of Land and Natural Resources runs Mount Akea. They oh. leased the summit to oh. the University of Hawaii and UH manage it day to day. Now they're talking about creating a new entity to manage it, which is interesting to me. If they told me they were going to promise that TMT was going to get built, I'd listen to them. But the reality is my concern that they're just using this as a delaying tactic, right? You come up with this new process and then you say, oh, we got to do this new thing. It's going to be great. But in the meantime, all it does is create uncertainty for the telescopes and they don't want to invest if they don't think there's going to be a lease for them to build telescopes on. So there's ways to do it and you could change the management structure. And, and that's an interesting idea. It's OK. I mean, UH is not the be all end all, but UH has done a really good job. The criticisms of them is, are not well founded. Well, and, they're stepping up, aren't they, to, to write more reports about. And they're doing, yeah, they just got a master plan approved by the regions and they they've just restructured. I mean, they've been doing an incredible job. The biggest thing they that they failed on was preventing the protests. And that's not that shouldn't have been their job anyway, because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? The protesters have worked themselves into this anger. And there, there are things that were worth objecting to, right? The fact that no none of the telescopes paid rent. That's an interesting thing to discuss. And TMT is now paying a million dollars in rent a year, plus a million dollars in that's scholarships, plus another million dollars in job training, right? So, and that's great. And that's something that was objected to during the contested case hearing process that was discussed, that was worked out. That's when those things should happen. Now it's just delaying tactics to try and drive up costs and kill the project. Well, tell us now, what, what do you think are the next steps for TNT? We're getting down to just about 45 seconds left. So what are next steps for TNT and what, what do you see the future? Uh, the big thing to do is go to Imua TMT Dot org and sign up for our email list and I'll send you out emails. You got to testify. That's the big thing. So we got to keep the momentum moving. We got to make sure UH gets its lease renewed so that there is astronomy on Mauna Kea. And then TMT needs to go apply to the federal government for a billion dollars so that they can get a uh, national science foundation to come in and fund them. That's going to be the next big step. So billion? Tell me about the billion. That's the only thing that'll attract NSF. National Science Foundation, what does that mean for them? Yeah. I mean, unless Elon Musk decides to just give us a billion dollars, we're going to need the National Science Foundation to come in and, and give funding. So the, that's that's where the uh, the Cato survey came in. So this big survey that the federal government puts on, looks at all the ground-based astronomy and says, what's the most important thing to do? And all these scientists and specialist professors say what it is, and they said it's TMT. And so they're looking at Mount Akea or Spain, but right now TMT is committed to Mount Akea and Mount Akea is clearly the better site. And I want it here, we want it here. I want, so, it, I want it diversifying our economy is what we're all about, isn't it? And certainly to take this away is gonna get in the way of that. And it's, and it's also about the perpetuation of Hawaiian culture through contribution. It's mm -hmm. really, you know, our ancestors sailed here by the stars and that's, that's what we do. We're, we're navigating space by using the telescopes to navigate the stars. And that's awesome. That's a great story. And it'll create tons of job opportunities right here at home for our kids, for my kids. And that's something we should celebrate. And I do celebrate. And I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna work out. It's gonna be great, but it does require people to stay engaged. Well, I, I think that's beautiful that you said that, Sam, because the 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 stars, the story of the stars, especially Hawaii's of of the of, of, of for our nation to represent that that heritage. That's a huge cultural heritage. It's very important. And that's made it confusing to understand where the protest was coming from, since that's been important to the Hawaiians moving around in the ocean. Uh, everybody's trying to claim to be the Native Hawaiians, but the reality is Native Hawaiians are not required to agree about everything. That's we're all just people, right? And we're all members of this democracy and we all have equal rights. And so we're not required to be one voice, right? Nobody asks the Japanese or the Koreans to all agree on stuff, right? Or, or the Howleys, right? Like we're all, we're all yeah. different people. We don't have to agree. And so, but everybody wants to capture it so that you can claim the mantle. But in the end, the truth is that there's a story to tell that's positive from this whole thing. And you can tell a negative story and the protesters are, and I choose not to do that. I choose to tell a positive story. Yes, and that exactly. story is that we can perpetuate the greatest aspects of our navigational heritage through contribution to modern astronomy with these 
fantastic instruments. It's it's so cool. I mean, I can't wait to see what the universe was like back when it was born. On a paddle in a canoe. Or the... see life on other planets. <laughs> Pardon me? They're going to look for life on other planets. With this I was going to say that's why it's so amazing that Hawaii could be at Mauna Kea, not only um, for the Earth, but not only for the country, USA, having this tremendous uh, work, but also having the first uh, universal connection made through through that point in time, which would be just phenomenal. But um, um, I thank you so much. This has been a fascinating conversation. I'm kind of stumbling here because I got another bunch of questions to ask. Maybe we'll have to do another uh, talk together, um, especially as our questions come in and uh, more news um, is generated. But thank you very much for participating in Think Tech Hawaii and uh, being on this show, the state of the state of Hawaii. And I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll Dalton. And uh, thank you, viewers. Uh, we really appreciate your attention. And aloha, everybody. <laughs>